Kia ora team, welcome back to the channel. This is the third and final video of the Great Barrier series. We get up to a whole bunch of cool stuff. We go snapper fishing in the mussel farms, I go spear fishing again. We ended up going fishing every morning in the mussel farms here and we did really well most mornings. So, anyway, I'm gonna butt out and let you guys watch this video. So just sit back, relax and watch the last installment of Great Barrier series. Net behind you if you want it, Stephen. Confident. Confident. Nice. One thing about the mussel farms is that they can be so productive. My dad was a mussel farmer for decades and I grew up fishing the mussel farms and every time we'd go out there we would always catch a good feed. So this time we decided to fish the mussel farms in the morning and it paid off big time. We got breakfast every morning from this mussel farm and it definitely provided for us as well as we caught some really good yeah. fish that were released. Shit, it's a goodie. Fuck, a little. <laughs> Look at that. Look at this kingy. Yeah, kingy. Big one. Look, at that. Huge. Huge. Not too kingy. bad. Size of them. That's the shark, isn't it? No? No, those are kingies. Look at the size! Am I excited? Yeah, that, that first one was a goodie. I can come back and spear fish in here. Okay, so this one. Snapper fillets. We did good. Once again, I am back at the same weed line as in part two of the Great Barrier series. If you haven't seen that video, guys, I will link that up at the end of this one. But same technique. I'm just taking a very vertical line to the bottom of the weed line, tucking myself in against a piece of weed and just making noise on the bottom and waiting.
Fish on! Yeah. One kingy, only one I saw, so I shot it. And I think it's the other one's partner that I shot the other day. Must be about 900, so. Also, not the best shot, a bit of a gut shot, but. Oh well, beggars can't be choosers. I don't drink before I dive, ever, but you can't beat a shower beer after a dive. Oh yeah, that's good, nice. Okay team, I am after a new wetsuit, so I've had a Boche wetsuit for about two years, actually, yeah, two years, and it's been a great suit, it's the most comfortable suit I've ever worn, however, the stitchless seams on these Boche wetsuits come off like nobody's business, so, I'm after a wetsuit that might last a little bit longer, considering the Boche wetsuit is very expensive, in the realm of wetsuits so can you please leave me uh, what wetsuit you're running the recommendations that you have mm -hmm. I've worn a moray before which was very hard <laughs> wearing because I'm very hard on my wetsuits I do a lot of cray diving and you'll see a lot of um, repairs up my arms because I'm always going for craze but yeah, I'm just interested to know which is the best wetsuit out there at the moment um, but I mean Boche cannot complain in terms of how comfortable it was, almost unbeatable. I've never worn a wetsuit like it, it's just the seams uh, keep coming off and I would rather that not happen and sacrifice a little bit of comfort for that. I've never seen such big schools of snapper. Yeah. Yeah. Just huge schools. Yeah. Swimming down that way, all just moving through the lines. Okay, so we found this awesome new spot that was loaded with butterfish. It had a nice deep drop off and it has lots of current moving past so what initially attracted us to this spot is that there was a ton of big fat mature butterfish so we did a recce we sussed it out and then we came back the next day and the viz was actually better so as you can see i'm just cutting up kinna in half and i'm throwing them over this ledge but little did i know the current was pumping so strong that it was bringing the kinna back to uh, the front of the ledge so the snapper were actually coming right in against the end of the ledge but anyway it's all good there's lots of big snapper I saw ghosting me out on that sort of 10 meter mark um, just out of sight but they were definitely there and I am definitely going back to the spot because it just reeks of big snapper not to mention I saw a couple of monsters
I had seen a few monster snappers just out in the distance and I was too eager. I came down to check the burley too early. Um, my float line just got caught then. Um, so I refreshed the burley again because I wanted to try and concentrate these big fish. And this really nice snapper came up from the bottom where I thought my kinners were going. And I hesitated. I looked for a bigger fish first before I actually made the decision to have a crack at him. He caught us away and I absolutely cooked the shot. Uh, I slowed the footage down and as, yeah, as you can see a massive snapper heading off down on the sand there. But I uh, slowed the footage down and my wrist was cocked, my arm wasn't straight and the recoil just sent my spear up in the total opposite direction. So yep, yeah, missed that one. But I get a second chance at a nice snapper, refresh the burly and come over this ledge here and smack a nicey top down. I reckon a 20 pounder. There's some f***ing good fish over it. It just looks a good spot, no one touches. It's very fishy. Two and one shot. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, team. Thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate every single one of you. Fourteen hundred subscribers. Unreal. Uh, anyway, this is the day we went home, and I'm just going to leave you with some absolute scenes. I jumped in on Horn Rock. I didn't shoot anything, but it was like an aquarium there. So. Once again, thank you so much for watching if you've got this far. And I appreciate you all. Uh, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. And don't be afraid to subscribe, fam. Catch you on the next one.